Hello everyone and welcome back to the Don't Kale My Vibe gardening channel. Today we're going to actually be finishing some of my garden beds together, direct sowing some things, and planting something I just picked up from Lowe's. It is a very rainy day. First thing I want to show you guys is I actually have my strawberry plants in a mini greenhouse now. I wasn't planning on investing in one of these, but I am so glad that I did because they are all springing up new bright green leaves and they, before when they arrived they were bare roots so they looked kind of dead. I was kind of worried about them. This thing was like $30 on Amazon. I will link it in my description box down below. Today while we were out, I picked up a rosemary plant. I'm probably gonna plant somewhere along my eggplants or something like that. I haven't decided yet, but this one is like very well established and needs to get out of this pot immediately. But mainly today we're gonna be finishing up this garden bed that's going to have my tomatoes in it. So I did go to Lowe's today and pick up a bunch of raised bed soil. I hope you guys can hear me over the wind. It's very windy today, but also pretty warm. It's supposed to be 75 tomorrow, which is why I wanna get this done so I can direct sow some peas and carrots because we're getting towards the end of March when that is an okay thing to do. You can make your own garden bed soil, like mix it up yourself with topsoil and peat moss and like all of those things, vermiculite. I like to just buy the, res the raised bed garden soil that already has that done for me. It just removes some of the effort I guess and it's not that expensive to do I think I spent $50 on dirt today but I got four bags of raised bed soil and a massive bag of in-ground soil for one of my other garden beds and then I also got the rosemary plant so all of that combined was 50 not that bad especially since you don't have to keep refilling raised garden beds as long as they're level with the ground so I didn't lose a bunch of garden soil in my old beds from last year so these ones, once they have dirt, they should be fine. I'll just replenish them with some compost over the winter and they should just like keep being okay. I won't have to keep buying dirt like this. And then the last thing I wanna point out before I get started is the first thing I do when I start raised garden beds is I pile them with leaves. The leaves make a really great start to a compost that's all gonna break down underneath the dirt. This right here, this black stuff you're seeing is actually compost that I purchased and put over the leaves. So it's gonna have a nice, like healthy, vitamin rich starter base to the garden beds. And also I have to buy less dirt because I have so much leaves piled up down here. You can also do sticks and stuff. If your garden bed planters are taller like this, that stuff takes longer to break down but really you just want to save as much space as you can for the dirt so really this is just like the compost and the leaves and then I won't need as much dirt to put on top of this but I like to have like a head start and also use what I already have which is leaves because that's free Another important thing to note is this stuff is going to compress a lot once it starts raining on it and stuff. So it might look fluffy and full right now, but you're gonna wanna add at least one or two more bags of soil when it looks like this. Because like I said, after we get a good rain, this is all going to sink down. You can even wet it down yourself if you wanna see how much space you're gonna actually have. But don't do what I did last year and just assume that this is full because I had to keep topping off my garden beds as the season progressed because they started to look emptier and emptier. All right, so here's what they look like all filled up and they are still gonna shrink a little bit because this is mostly dry. Um, soil, but as you can see, I barely left any room towards the top here. Also, if you're gonna be adding mulch on top of your soil, which will lock in like the moisture and stuff and lose less nutrients during the summer, then definitely leave a little bit of space. But I'm gonna do that once I actually have plants in the ground and I don't have that yet. I am gonna go ahead and plant this rosemary in one of my nightshade um, planter boxes. It's gonna have my eggplants, cayennes, and jalapenos and some beans in it. Um, I haven't really thought this up. I haven't Googled does rosemary like to grow next to eggplants. I'm just gonna stick it in so I can have some rosemary. So the plan is to have an eggplant here and an eggplant here. I think in my garden plans video I said I was gonna plant chamomile here, but I think I'm just gonna do that on this bed and then this plant will have rosemary instead. So you guys have seen me transplant plants before, but this is how I do it. I stick the entire pot in the dirt, which is nice and loose. And uh, I just take it out of the pot and slip it right into this little cookie cutter section that I've made with the planter. And there we have it. And then I'm gonna add this to my pile of containers that I save for seed starting and transplanting. So I've got two types of vining peas here. I'm gonna grow these next to the tomatoes so they can feed the tomatoes nitrogen. And also I have the nice trellis over there. So these are going to climb up that and that's gonna be super cool to have things growing closely together that help each other. And also I can eat them both, which is delicious. So as you 
can see peas are cold tolerant, which means I can plant these now and I don't have to worry too much about frost. And also they like to be direct sowed. They grow very quickly and I'm happy to have something getting started in the garden today. So this little gap here under the trellis is where I'm going to be planting some peas and they're gonna hopefully climb up this trellis here and I'll have a tomato plant in front and it will also be weaved in between the trellis. So I should have a pretty decent setup here, I think. Um, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. I've never used a trellis, so we're gonna see. Here's what they look like, and it says the spacing on these is every two inches, so that's awesome. I'm actually gonna space them a little bit more than that because I also need room on the trellis for the tomatoes, and I don't want these to get too shaded out, even though they're cold and heat tolerant, so they would probably do well in some shade, but I wanna leave a lot of space for my big tomato plants because they're all indeterminate, so they're gonna keep growing and they're gonna need a lot more space than the peas will. So I made a hole here and a hole here, and I'm gonna drop and two seeds in each hole so that way they have a good chance at germinating get in there get in there and then I'll come and thin them out once they've sprouted and then I'm doing the same thing on the other sides of the garden bed now I'm gonna go ahead and direct sow some carrots pretty heavily in that tomato bed I'm gonna have a lot of space in the center of my bed and so the tomatoes are gonna just be growing along the edges where I put the peas so I'm gonna have plenty of space. You can plant a lot of these per square foot. I'm not gonna be doing any measuring. I'm just gonna sprinkle them and thin them as I go. Carrot seeds are so tiny, so like it's kind of impossible to plant one at a time. And that's great because I'm kind of lazy. So I'm kind of gonna guesstimate here. Um, the tomato is gonna go about in this spot. So I'm gonna go a little bit over and I'm gonna start making little rows to put the carrots in. Nice and light. They only need like a fourth of an inch to be buried in. And like I said, you can do a lot of carrots per square foot. So here's the plan for the carrots. I'm going to do two rows here, two rows here, and then a mini row right here and here. And then I'll put a basil plant here in the center. And then we have plenty of space to put a tomato plant once it is time to put those in the ground. So all I'm going to do is sprinkle these pretty heavily into the little rows. These are the deep purple hybrid carrots. So that's what that looks like. And I'm just gonna do that with all of the rows. I'm gonna do purple carrots in these two, short and sweet carrots in these short ones, and then the regular long orange carrots in these two. All right, and then I pinched the little aisle section things together, covered them just very loosely with the dirt. And normally I would water this in, but it is a super overcast rainy day, so the planet is gonna do that for me. And that is everything that we have going down in the garden today. I'm so excited because we're like three or four weeks out from our last frost date now. So now I just have to keep all of my seedlings alive until then, and I'm very excited to get started outside. So thank you guys so much for watching another gardening video. I will see you guys in the next one very, very soon.